Hello and welcome to another tutorial for using Unite in which we are going to be looking at how we can bring GPS data into Unite so that we can then in future apply it to an augmented reality app. So uh, I've done my usual, I've started with a 3D built-in render pipeline, I've got it open and I'm just going to create a, a little UI for us to put that data onto. So I'm going to start with a canvas uh, on that canvas which I, I can see there, we'll do. I'm going to right click, I'm going to add a text mesh pro. Uh, yep, I'm going to import. Not going to bother with the samples for now. Um, can we see that? No, nope, we're on the wrong side, so let's flick that round. You can just about see it there. I'm going to move this text box up, move it to the side, stretch it so it's a bit wider, it's a bit deeper. And I'm going to call this, this is where our GPS stuff's going to go, uh, but I'm going to name this. So let me double click, there we go, I'm just going to call this GPS uh, Debug. So this is where I'm going to put all the information so I can sort of see what's happening. Uh, it would probably be a good idea to recolor things but I'm just going to leave it as it is for the moment. Um, I'm also going to want to put a couple of buttons on here which we'll probably use in a little while. So if I just put a button over there. So this is just going to be for my store GPS location. So I'm just going to pop that out so I can write um, store. So if I want to save the current GPS where I'm up to, I'll do that. Uh, and now I'm just going to have one that will just sort of stop GPS if there's any reason for me to disengage it for a little while. We'll just call that stop. Okay, I'll just do a bit of, bit of house cleaning on this as well by just saying uh, the GPS. I'm going to lock this to the top left corner. The two buttons I'm going to lock to the middle bottom so as we scale they should stay exactly where we need them to be which is handy when you start messing about with your mobile phone. Uh, canvas I'm also going to set the scale on this, no that's fine, um, to scale with screen size. So I'm expecting these to jump around a bit now. I should have done that first. Um, no I'm quite happy to keep that as it is for now. Okay so that's because we've got our UI set up. So what we're now going to do is create a script, so C sharp, I'm going to call this uh, location stuff. Uh, I will do a better script later on as we delve into the AR, but for today, for this lesson, I'm just going to focus on getting the actual GPS data. Okay, let's open up in Visual Studio. So I want to incorporate a couple of libraries, so the TM Pro for the text boxes. Uh, and system because we're going to need the location um, what else I'm going to need. Now I've got a few variables that I'm going to use. Um, first of all, a couple of global variables. Uh, one is going to be our private character unit K. This means we're going to work in kilometers. I'm creating a link to our debug text box so I can put the data on. Um, also thinking just a little bit further ahead, I'm just going to say is the GPS okay or not? So have we got a signal? If so, we can do things. If not, then don't even try. And I'm just creating a float version of the Pi. Um, I don't know why I chose to do this. I'm just going to go with it for the moment. Now what I'm also going to do is, this is really clumsy, I'm going to create a new class to hold our GPS information. This is so we can expand this at a later point. This is going to be a little bit of a crude class. Uh, so anyone good at programming will probably be upset with me for making this public. This is just for the sake of prototyping. But I've got a class called GPS Location, and I've put this in the exact same file as my location stuff, but I've just put it at the very end, after the last class. I should put this in a separate file, but again, this is easy for me to just jump up and down. So I've got public float longitude, longitude and public float latitude. Um, I also know later on we'll probably want these to be doubles, but again, this will do for prototype purposes. I've got a public constructor, so when I create a new GPS location, it's going to initialize into zero. However, if I want to override GPS location with some parameters, it can initialize it with our current longitude and latitude. Um, I've also got a function called public string get location data. So later on when I'm updating, I can just call this function and it's going to return me this string that just tells me what our latitude is and longitude. Just speeds things up a little bit, bit of code reuse. Again, in a later tutorial, we'll tidy this up a little bit, make it feel a bit more professional. Okay, so I've come back up to our global variables, and now I can create uh, three more. And our three more are going to be GPS start location. So that's basically the location 
if we want to press that start so we know where we're starting to measure from and our current location so if we've walked off it's going to keep track between these two GPS positions so again we, we know that these are now going to be empty there's going to be zero coordinates which is the center of the earth so if you're stood there you're not having a great day okay uh, I'm going to delete this start uh, function because I'm going to bring a new one in and again I've already written it so you don't have to worry about watching me type lots and lots um, it's quite a bit to go at and I'll, I'll sort of go through it okay so I've got a new start function this time I'm using something called uh, the I enumerator this just basically means we can run this function and if it takes a while to execute it won't make unity hang or freeze so we're starting the function up if we've not got location set by the user it's going to give us a warning so while we're on the PC it's going to stick that in the debug.log but we can now stick this in the debug.txt which of course is our text box just here um, then it's going to try and start up our location services so if you've not got location enabled it won't let you continue um, so input.location.start means let's fire up the GPS and start getting data it's going to allow you 20 seconds to see if this actually works and this is what why we've got this whole IE numerator it allows this um, wait for seconds to happen otherwise your program would just hang for 20 seconds which means it would think it's crashed so it's going to allow 20 seconds for it to try and start up the GPS receiver and if it can't it's going to fail but it won't fail and crash your phone um, so if it didn't initialize we can just say it's timed out there was a problem and then this app now stops um, and again we've got a few more warning messages that it couldn't get the location so either way it can exit there um, I know I've got this GPS text I didn't really use that one so I'm going to go back to the GPS debug um, so let's just change that one back this was because I had several text boxes on screen for different purposes but I'll just do that so I've got multiple lines so again I'm outputting it to the debug.log probably don't need it but now what I'm doing is I'm outputting the location and it's going to give us our latitude our longitude our altitude our how accurate is it actually being so it knows how many satellites are we tracking and then finally what is the current time because that's how GPS is working it's based really off times you don't need all this information but it just could be interesting to see and I'm also setting a variable to say GPS is true so yes we know we've got GPS and then we need to go into our update function uh, I'll just press save because now I've got a bit of code there I will put a link to this script uh, which will be on my github um, okay so now we're in update again we've got quite a bit to go at here so I'll just try and take it a chunk at a time so in the update function we know this is going to be called as fast as possible that's why I'm saying if GPS is okay okay so we've got the if GPS is okay because obviously we don't want to try and do all this if we've not yet got GPS so I'm just saying debug.txt is equal to GPS then I'm saying debug.txt is now a new line location so we've got the latitude we've got the longitude and we've got the uh, again the accuracy because if you're not tracking any satellites you're going to see this being very very glitchy um, so it's now going to output our our current our yeah the last data the last time your phone got a signal it's going to output that I'm also going to store that into our current location so again that was our little new object of our current location so it's overriding, overriding those initialized zero zeros um, and then at the very end I'm just going to say what is our stored location now at the point we start this program this should be zero so it shouldn't say anything on screen other than zero comma zero um, and that's why I'm using the get location data because it means I don't have to build up this string every time okay I also did a measure distance uh, var variable so I've, I'm going to do that here and now as well um, so I'm going to just say if the measured distance is true now this is where I've had to pinch somebody else's code a little bit and I will put a link to that as well so I'm now saying if measured distance is equal to true then I'm going to get the distance between these two GPS coordinates now if we were not in unity let's say we we're in Android studio using just pure Java this is built into the location services it's really easy to work but it's not in unity so we have to deal with it ourselves um, again I've made that same mistake by just misnaming that let's just fix that error now of course it's whinging because we've not got yet a function called distance so here we go I'm just going to come down outside of of the of our update function but we need to be inside our main class so, so that bracket gone missing um, so I'm now just going to press enter so again I'm at the end of the update function but I'm inside 
the class itself. I'm just going to press paste. Um, again, this script will be below. So I've now got this function called distance, which I took from this link just here, uh, from better mathematicians than me, uh, and I've just been trusting that for now. And again, this will be linked below. So again, this distance is going to receive the latitude and longitude for both places, and what unit of measurement do we want to work in? That is exactly why I had this k up here for kilometers. Um, so we're down to kilometers. And we're just saying if if basically they're the same then just return zero. It means you're in the exact same spot. So there's no point doing the calculation. Um, but if it's not the same, it's going to do some calculation, which I'm not going to attempt to explain, but it's going to convert degrees to radians. It's going to try and work out that distance based on our on our, on our longitude of the planet. I think that's one way, right way around. And you can see there, if it's K, we're doing that multiplier. If it's nautical miles, it's going to be via that measurement. So if you're trying to do a marine or uh, you know navigation thing, and it's going to return that function. Okay, and the other couple of functions with there, with these whole conversions just here, are just below, where it's converting our degrees to radians and radians back to degrees. Okay, so that should now give us an app that lets us um, track where we currently are. The bit I've not done yet is the buttons. The buttons to actually store our location and stop our GPS. So if I just come back into our code, let's have a couple more functions. These are fairly straightforward now. Oops, wrong file. So I'm just going to come down here. Again, I've got the void update, so I'm just going to come to the outside the update. I'll just put these just here for now. Uh, public stop GPS, so we're just going to stop the GPS from tracking. Because remember, it will wear your battery down. Um, or store current GPS. So our start location, where you're going to start sort of walking from, is our current longitude and current latitude. And I can say measure distance equals true. So what we should now try and do is compile this run to the phone and see if it works. Okay, so I'm back into Unity. I'm just going to create a new empty and this is going to be just my GPS handle. I'm going to drag the code onto this. So it now wants our debug.txt. So I'm just going to drag our GPS debug text box over. Obviously it's not okay just yet. Just to see if this compiles before I try and put it onto the mobile phone. I'm just going to press play and see what happens. I don't expect it to work because my computer doesn't have GPS built in. But there we go, we can see we've got latitude and longitude, we've got our accuracy, etc. Let's look in console. We can see that it's not enabled, so we can see there's a problem there as we would expect, but it has compiled. Okay, so now we know that it does compile in Unity, it's time to push it over to the phone. Uh, so as with previous videos, this is for Android because I don't own any Apple products. Uh, we're going to flick it over to Android. Um, we're going to go and say switch platform and give it a moment for it to update itself. Okay, so now it's finished. I'm just going to jump into player settings. Going to go on to the build parts. Um, so I can call this sort of, you know, lights and clockwork. GPS AR version 0.1, that'll do me nicely. I'm going to come down here a little bit, look at what versions we're on. Uh, I tend to always bring this up to at least Android 10. Um, automatic license only that will do. Okay, so let's hope. Let's see if that now works. So I'm going to close that down. Uh, we could play about with icons and things. Refresh. There we go. There's my phone, so, and I should be able to press build and run, and we should see it now pop up. Um, I always create a folder called dist for my APKs, and um, let's just call this GPS AR01. Uh, oh, inside the distribution folder, there we go. So that's what we're going to call the APK. Press save. Uh, save changes yet? Yeah, not do. And then be patient. Okay, so that's worked. It's asked for my location permissions, and then my buttons are off screen. It didn't quite work. So let's have a quick play with the UI. I'm a bit surprised that they were off because they should have been locked to that position, but they haven't. So I'm just going to grab the two buttons, I'm going to pull them up a little bit. Since I'm here, I'm just going to resize them because I think they're a little bit thin. Okay, we'll do it like that for the moment. Not great quality, but they're now moved up a little bit. So let's test. Again, it's still okay. So let's recompile and try again. Okay, as always when rushing videos, I forgot to do a little thing, which is our buttons themselves. So if I click on button, we come down to our on click. I haven't actually hooked them up to anything. So I'm just going to press add. Uh, I'm going to grab our GPS handle, pull that across. 
So again, we're not dragging the script on, we are dragging the actual button object on. And that will allow me then to, to link to our location stuff and just say store current GPS. I can then click on the stop button, do same again, add, drag the GPS handle over, no function, location stuff, stop GPS. So now we, that should be kind of there. Okay, so here I am about to test it outside. Let's see how it operates. So we are making sure that we are allowed to use the device's location. So we can see it's not got the thing and they it's quickly picked it up. So we can see it's now got my GPS coordinates. It's got an accuracy of six, uh, but it's stored nothing as yet. So I'm just going to store this current location. There we go. We can now see it's displaying my stored location and the distance. So as I walk along, we should start seeing the distances now counting up. And we should start seeing the GPS updating between the stored location and, of course, the current location. So I'm just going to press store again. I could really sort of just add a little list now. So it would store lots of these locations. So I could start to build up a little, uh, maybe, GPS treasure hunt program. But that should do for now. So I shall see you in a little while when I get back to my computer. So now what you could try before the next lesson is, can you do something to that if, if the, the, the point between two locations is below a certain value, let's say you're only one or two meters away, that you could pop up something in your UI. Pop a little picture, like a little mini treasure hunt. So no fancy AR, just simply uh, a simple UI aspect. So um, I hope you've found this video useful. If so, please remember to like, subscribe, positive comment below. Please feel free to leave suggestions for future videos. And in the next video, we'll start looking at how we can do camera pass through um, and some simple AR elements. So I shall see you in the next one.